Hey everyone, Ruben here with a little intro to our next sermon series at Gale Presbyterian. For the next six weeks, a few young adults in our congregation will be taking a confirmation course based on an interesting little book called What's the Least I Can Believe and Still Be a Christian? A Guide to What Matters Most. The book is by Martin Thielen, and it looks at some of the essentials to what it means to follow Christ. So each week, the confirmation group will look at one of those essential questions, beginning with the question, what matters most? At the same time, the congregation will be following along the themes of the book in a six-part sermon series on the core of our faith. I'm sure you're going to find it informative and encouraging. However, what we believe is not where Thielen's book begins. That's part two. Part one of his book asks the question, what things do we not need to believe to follow Christ? And that's what I'd like to talk about in this video. Most of you are familiar with the old gospel song, Gimme That Old Time Religion. The chorus goes like this. Gimme that old time religion. Gimme that old time religion. Gimme that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Well, a lot of old time religion is good and noble. But there is some old time religion that is neither good nor noble. Some old time religion gave us the Crusades, the Inquisitions and religious wars. Some old time religion oppressed women, defended slavery and stifled scientific inquiry. The fact is some old time religion is unhealthy and needs to be discarded. In Matthew 9, 16 to 17, Jesus says, No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, otherwise the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are ruined. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. In this passage, Jesus speaks of old wineskins, a reference to the old time religion of his day. He says that sometimes new wineskins are needed because some old time religion isn't worth keeping. As Presbyterians, a church that is part of the Reformed tradition, we have a history of putting new wine into new wineskins. Our motto is reformed and always reforming. And so Thielen's book gives 10 things that we as followers of Christ do not need to believe. And I'm pleased to say that as a progressive and reforming church, we do not believe these things anymore. Instead, we find a new way of faith in a little book called Living Faith, which is a statement of belief produced by the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Here are just a few examples. Old time religion says God causes bad things to happen to punish or test us. However, living faith says we affirm God's loving purpose even in a world where evil abounds. Old time religion says good Christians don't doubt. Living faith says the working through of doubt is part of our growth in faith. Old-time religion says women can't be preachers. Living faith says ministers are set apart to preach the gospel. Christ preserves this order today by calling to it both men and women. Old-time religion says the Bible should be taken literally. Living faith says the writing of the Bible was conditioned by the language, thought, and setting of its time. Old-time religion says it's okay for Christians to be judgmental. Living faith says we should not address others in a spirit of arrogance, implying that we are better than they. Many people in our world today and in our own community, especially young people, have problems with old-time religion. 
However, most of them don't really reject God or Christianity or church. Instead, they reject the way that God and Christianity and church have been packaged. In the language of today's text, they're not rejecting the pure wine of Jesus and Christianity. They are rejecting outdated, inadequate, dried up wineskins. These people desperately need to know about new wineskins. They need to know there are alternative expressions of the Christian faith, different from the negative caricatures they see on religious television and in the news. Just this last month, Christians have been in the news related to LGBTQI exclusion, sexual abuse cover-ups, violating religious freedoms, indifference to the plight of immigrants, support for white supremacists and Christian nationalism, reluctance to make amends to Indigenous communities, rejecting interfaith dialogue, and performing exorcisms on children without parental consent. Of course, for every negative story about the church in the news, there are hundreds of untold stories about churches doing good in our world. People need to hear those stories. They need to know that not all Christians reject science and reason. They need to know that not all Christians are judgmental and arrogant. They need to know that it's okay to have questions and doubts. They need to know that you can love God with your heart, but also with your head. In short, the world needs to know that there are alternatives to unhealthy expressions of old-time religion. And we, as Presbyterians, a Reformed and Reforming Church, we offer such an alternative. We, in the mainline and modern tradition, have a gospel message of open-minded, grace-filled, gender-inclusive, head, heart, and hands Christian faith what you could call a generous orthodoxy. And that is something that we should proclaim boldly. And so I hope you will follow along as we take this journey together, looking at the essentials of our faith, as we seek to, to take the, the new wine of Jesus Christ and put it into new wineskins. I'll see you Sunday. Thank you.